It is 10 o'clock. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the EU Missions Possible with Business Angels Europe event. In today's pitching session, we will showcase innovative research companies from the Horizon Results platform. These companies address the five EU missions, smart cities, climate change, beating cancer, restoring our oceans, and finally, restoring our soils. My name is Jan Debets. I am the head of operations at Business Angels Europe. I will be moderating today's session. And just a one word on Business Angels Europe. We are the European Confederation of angel investing. So what that means is we are a network of angel networks. And what is an angel? Angel investors are those people who invest their money directly into innovative companies. And angel investors like to invest in syndicates or in networks. And this is to source great deal flow, to spread risk and to combine each other's expertise and experience. At Business Angels Europe, we represent and work with these investor networks. And our goal is bringing them together on a European stage to work with them cross border and to ensure that they are also thinking about European opportunities and to invest in European companies. And that's what we're doing today. So I'm very thankful for all of you joining as participants and in particular, I'm very thankful for the jury members who represent angel investors in Europe. I want to give a special shout out today to Meta Group, which has been supporting us in training the entrepreneurs to give great pitches today. And I also want to thank my colleagues, of course, from the European Commission Horizon Results Platform team, uh, as well as uh, the team of uh, VO Europe. So today we will proceed as follows. First, I will give the floor to the jury investors participating to introduce them themselves shortly. And after that, the pitches will start as follows. Startup has eight minutes to pitch. I will notify them after seven minutes that they have one minute left. And afterwards, we have a seven minute Q&A between the jury and the startup. Um, I will notify, notify all of you on time if we were running if we were running out of time, of course. One more point, if there's a technical difficulty with a startup, which is significant, I will move them to the back of the line uh, so, so as to, to keep the process going. And after the pitches, we have some time for overall recommendations and remarks. We will stop at 11.45, that's our aim. But before that, I'm very pleased and proud to have two great speakers presenting first, representing the European Commission. Uh, first up is Jean-Éric Paquet. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, I'm not Jean-Éric Paquet. My name is Matthias Will. Um, I'm the director in the Common Implementation Center of DG Research and Innovation. I have the pleasure to work with my colleagues from the Horizon Europe uh, platform. And in a moment, we will have the possibility to listen to a message from our director general, Jean-Éric Paquet. He cannot be here uh, this morning. His apologies for that. Uh, we have recorded a small video message. So thank you very much for having me <coughs> and us. Um, wonderful event. Uh, I will also be very happy to stay on a little bit and listen uh, to the different témoignages. That's great. Uh, uh, our concern, of course, is that uh, to groups like you, we can make our services and incentives yet more relevant. So uh, uh, my colleague George uh, will 
post in the chat the different links also to our products and services. Uh, Jan has mentioned our Horizon Results platform. We hope that you find it relevant. We try to make it more interactive. Uh, we have the Horizon Results Booster. We have something like Horizon Results Platform TV, where we can also showcase uh, different results. And then under incentives, uh, there we have the Horizon Impact Award, maybe to uh, reward, but in particular to acknowledge uh, great practice and insights uh, whenever there is a particular impact on society, on uh, the economy, uh, the environment, or our general well-being. Yeah. Now, uh, groups like you um, are important target groups for us. Uh, um, we are not there, just a the machinery to hand out money to finance, but we really want to listen and tailor our different products also to your particular needs. So we are entering also into a phase of more client centricity, easier access to, process, uh, to, to products, uh, uh, more mobile, more personalized, more two-way communication. So Jan, I might come back to you and others in a bit of time together with the colleagues to misuse you a little bit as dummies yeah, in our target group segmentation to tell us how we can better uh, extend our funding and tenders uh, portal, the e-grant suite uh, yeah, to allow easier access. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we also look at uh, the researchers, uh, yeah, policy makers, national contact points, uh, intellectual property experts, and you have many other target groups which are important, but I think uh, more tailor-made offers uh, uh, are something very important. Um, so here now zooming in EU missions, um, what is important, this is not just something for us in DG research and innovations. You may know EU missions, Jan mentioned the different ones, uh, is something that spreads basically across the whole commission. So all commission services are mobilized uh, to support, to open doors, uh, to fund. Um, and uh, I would say maybe we should listen now to the message of our Director General who speaks specifically about maybe your role, your contribution and EU missions. These European missions are about uh, deploying solutions and technologies uh, in the economy, in society. So uh, we hope to find um, with you uh, investors uh, which will be interested to team up uh, under these five missions in cancer, in cities, soil, oceans and climate adaptation, to team up uh, with actors in Europe, team up also with the European Commission and, and many other actors at EU level, and invest in deploying cutting-edge uh, solutions, technologies, uh, but also social innovation to help our societies indeed uh, transform and meet uh, Europe's ambition to reduce CO2 emissions, uh, deal with uh, biodiversity and environment, and really co collectively, under the mission, make a difference. We believe that in Europe we have uh, the innovators, and I'm sure we also have the business angels and investors which want this impact investment and will team up around the missions to make a difference, deploying solutions investing in their deployment, making a difference in society. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, please turn to us uh, if you have particular needs, if, uh, you, uh, if we can make our results platform better, other services too, but first and foremost, make active use of the Horizon Results platform. We think it's an insightful uh, source of inspiration. And uh, I would like to thank you for all of that, uh, as we say in Belgium, bon continuation with it. Uh, and I'm looking forward to listening to these different presentations. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Matthias. Thank you, uh, Mr. Paquet. Let's get it started. But before we do, a quick round of the jury. Dear jury, I ask you for one minute 
intro no more francesca you first yes uh, thank you buongiorno a tutti uh, francesca natali from meta i've been working for the venture capital market uh, for the last uh, 20 years so far, but I'm also a business angel myself, being a founding member of the largest Italian female business angels club, and I'm working also in the screening committee of the, uh, of the club, and uh, I also been involved in a big number of uh, training course uh, program schemes uh, supporting uh, European scale up in getting ready for meeting investors and reaching the next round of investment. Thank you, Francesca. Rene, one minute. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, everybody. My name is Rene Reitenbach. I'm founder of Business Angels Connect, that is a uh, private investor network in the Benelux specialized on uh, chemistry. And chemistry is very broad, of course. 80% of everything is chemistry, I always say. But it's chemistry, health, and agri food. Um, we are very much uh, aligned uh, to the Dutch uh, ecosystem uh, and the Benelux ecosystem. And um, uh, we have also an, a quite an international network. Uh, also in Germany with, with colleague uh, angel networks we cooperate with. and. Um, um, I'm happy to uh, to join this uh, event and and um, uh, let's see uh, what it brings. Thank you. Thank you, Rene Panayotis. Good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of Saric. Uh, we are a private uh, center, the business innovation center of Cyprus, certified by EBN. Um, we have also operating under Saric the Gravity Ventures Incubator. Uh, and I'm also a business angel. Thank you, Palagnotis. Last but not least, Stephen. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Stephen Rogers. I'm a consultant and business angel currently based in Madrid, Spain. I'm from the US originally and spent significant time in East Africa as well as parts of Europe and helped found the Nairobi Business Angel Network in Kenya. Uh, as well as working on a new business angel network uh, based in Europe, focused globally um, from IE Business School here in Spain. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That is a great mix of jury members from different verticals, different industries, different geographies, um, and they will be uh, bearing the brunt of the startup uh, pitches. They will be asking their pointed questions to the startups, and so we all will get a bit wiser. Let's get it started. First up is Convert Pharmaceuticals. Um, when you're ready and the slide is ready, I will start the eight minutes on the clock. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, I will start sharing my screen. Are, are you able to see my screen? I see your screen. Very, very good. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the, the Business Angel Network representatives today. Uh, today, we want to talk to you about Convert Pharmaceuticals and our vision, uh, which is to increase patient life expectancy uh, by using what today is cancer's strength and transform it into its own weakness. So uh, tumor hypoxia is a uh, feature of solid tumors. It's a consequence of bad vascularization of tumor. And therefore, as a consequence, uh, tumor hypoxic cells are actually more aggressive, they make more metastasis, and they're also resistant to most of the treatments. And uh, tumor hypoxia occur in about 50% of solid tumors, uh, all type of disease. So what we understand from this is that the presence of hy hypoxia actually hampers the effectiveness of standard of care treatments. Taking the example, for example, of immunotherapy, which has received a lot of focus, um, it has only a success rate currently of 20%. And a fraction of this can be explained by the presence of hypoxia. Now, in the eight major markets uh, globally, we have about 8.7 million new cancer cases every year. With the solution that we will present to you today, uh, we can help patients first uh, in monotherapy, 
uh, with uh, uh, about 824,000 patients that could be uh, helped. But we can also support patients by combination with existing treatments with more patients that we can support here with immunotherapy, about 1.5 million patients. Of course, this has a strong impact of the life of patients, but it also addresses a loss of opportunity for pharmaceutical companies as a lot of patients that do not respond well to the treatments stop treatment. And we estimate, for example, for immunotherapy, this loss of opportunity at about $49 billion. So the big question is, can we reverse the advantage of certain cancers and use tumor hypoxia as a tumor specific target for per personalized treatment? We think we can with our drugs called immunomides. So this is a schematic representation of a tumor and chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy would not work very well in hypoxic tumors due to presence of low oxygens. And with our drug, which is actually a product that will be activated under hypoxic conditions and will become a very powerful drug that may produce inside the tumors and go also beyond the hypoxic areas, uh, we can actually kill hypoxic cells and make the other treatment more efficient. And this drug will be particularly e efficient in a subtype of cancer with a genetic defect that we identified. Um, and then in, the, in that subgroup, our drug could be used in monotherapy. So basically we will strengthen the uh, standard treatment. To illustrate the potential benefit of our drug, let's take a very hypothetical case. Victoria Anderson has a, a non-small cell lung cancer, 10 metastases, unfortunately for her. She received immunotherapy, but uh, because five metastases are hypoxic, she will have a response of only the five non-hypoxic metastases and the five which are hypoxic will progress. So this is a progression and the patient will have to receive a second line non-curative treatment chemotherapy. Suppose this exactly the same case, but the treatment will be immunotherapy with um, immunomide, which will take care of the hypoxic cells. Therefore, immunotherapy will be more efficient. It will be given during two years, and there's an increased chance that this patient will be progression-free after five years. So uh, today our team uh, is made of an experienced management team with deep scientific expertise in the field of tumor hypoxia, but also uh, in uh, oncology. And we have uh, entrepreneurs that have a track record of success uh, in startups uh, as well. Uh, we also have a scientific advisory board with members uh, from the UK, New Zealand, uh, Canada, uh, for example. Now let's have a look at some of the key milestones of the company today. So everything started in 2017 with a team of scientists that believed in the potential of hypoxia activated prodrug and also obtained important European regional grants such as an ERC advanced. In 2018, the company obtained its fully owned IP first patent. And in 2020, uh, the company was able to validate some of its uh, biomarkers uh, related to imaging and genomics, but also to show the effectiveness of the drug together with chemotherapy and immunotherapy, for example. Now, in 2022, our aim is to go for this uh, phase one, for which we have uh, already an approval, and we have a drug which has been uh, released for clinical use. The ultimate aim is to look towards 2026 for an exit. Now, in I, for the IP, we have a strong IP position uh, with two major patents covering both uh, major compounds around immunomide, but also uh, another with additional data. We're working on a third patent on the biomarkers that have been validated. And the company also had, has three peer-reviewed scientific papers which have been published in 2021. Now, the strategy for today uh, is to work on a non-cancer type specific uh, strategy, uh, which opens the market, uh, but also to work on patient selection through what we call biomarkers to select sensitive population to our drug. Uh, 
We'll go for phase one and two A uh, directly, for which we have already received approval from competent authorities in the Netherlands, which de-risks at this stage already the project. Now, the next steps after that will be a clinical trial phase two B, and to prepare for an exit, exit where we expect an increase of value of the company of, of about 20 to 30 times uh, the current value. Now, uh, what we are looking for today is an investment from VCs of, of around 2.5 million euros, part of which has already been secured uh, by uh, historic uh, investors in the company. And very interestingly, we already have public uh, grants which enable us to cover this investment by about 55% on top of that of public uh, investment. The company, on top of that, already has cash flow available, which can also be matched with the aim to have a total uh, in a budget of 5.34 million euros to conduct our phase 1 and 2A clinical trial, of which here you can find a cost uh, distribution. One minute. So uh, I want to thank you uh, for your attention. We're here to answer any question uh, that you might have. And please don't hesitate to get in touch with us if you're interested uh, to jump in this adventure to uh, continue the fight about, uh, against resistant cancers. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Philippe and Bryce. Very well on time. Now to the jury. I will first maybe give René the, the opportunity to, to give a question. Please stop, uh, stop uh, screen sharing as well. Sure. I will start the time for the, yeah, the name. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bryce. Uh, very interesting, but it is a lot of information. Um, um, I have two questions uh, uh, in this short time. Um, um, uh, uh, is, you say that the claim of the therapy is uh, more uh, is validated, but can you explain more on that? And secondly, uh, you mentioned there is already cash flow, but uh, is that from grants or what, what is the source of the cash flow? Do you have clients and what kind of clients? Thank you. Okay. Philippe, can I leave you at least the first part of the, of the question? Uh, yes, so what we want to say, I'm not sure I understood the questions, but um, for the scientific part, this drug has been uh, validated on more than uh, 20 uh, different uh, tumor models, uh, experimental tumor models. So first in vit molecular in vitro tumor models, and that's, uh, that's quite a lot, a lot of work. So we have a good panels of, of, of cancer cell line. What we conclude is that uh, in all our cell line, it works except two, where there is no hypoxia at all. So we uh, really confirm what we knew, that we need hypoxia to activate our project. Yeah, but then, uh, uh, sorry yeah, to ahead. interrupt but due the time, but you present Miss Anderson su yes. suggesting that... that uh, so. Uh, so it isn't yet validated in a patient's uh, group? No, it's an hypothetical cause, a case just to illustrate the potential benefit. But the first, we are now going to start this year, the first in human trial. So we are going to inject for the first time ever this drug in patient. So just purely hypothetical to, sh to illustrate the potential benefit and the place in the workflow. Okay, okay, thank you. And now about the current cash flow. What is the? Yes, I will answer this part of the question. So this is um, still part of the uh, previous investment uh, that we have, as well as I mentioned, we do have um, uh, grants which has enabled us to match uh, this investment. So this is cash still available today uh, to the company. Um, but indeed, uh, as a uh, drug development company, we're looking at revenues. Uh, as soon as uh, the clinical validation uh, has been has been made, and that we can work with pharmaceutical companies to work on a licensing deal or either uh, a complete exit. Okay. Thank you, Bryce. Okay. Renee, any anyone else? Francesca, Stephen, Pagnotis, Francesca. Yes. So, 
thank you, thank you very much. Um, I would you like to know if you can quantify maybe in percentage uh, the effectiveness of the standard treatment if it used in combination with uh, um, uh, your solution, if used in combination with the immunomide, how it will increase? Yes, we made some simulations and basically when you look at with immunotherapy now we can cure about 20% uh, of the patients and we believe that in hypoxic tumors, which is only 50% of all cancers, we could uh, double that percentage. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I ask also a question. Um, as far as the competition, I mean, you, you've mentioned about, um, you know, the standard procedure. Did you analyze a little bit the difference also as far as the, you know, the, except from the methodology, also the pricing, or you just rely that this will be set up by the, because you are going to be licensing? Did you did a little bit more analysis on the competition to give us more information? So currently today, there is uh, no competition on uh, working on, on hypoxia as a target today. So we do uh, plan to work uh, with pharmaceutical companies. As I mentioned, there is a lot of opportunity for them to see uh, how to combine efficiently uh, our drug uh, with, with the current standard of care. So this is something that we plan to work on in parallel of working on the phase one and two A. So starting contacts uh, with pharmaceutical companies. I don't know, Philippe, if you have anything to add uh, to this. No, we are not at the stage where we have uh, so deeply on the pricing that will depend on the distributor, really. Just another question. Have you looked a little bit more on maybe competing parties that are maybe startups that are working at the, you know, parallel with you? Or have you done such a, such a search? Um, yes, we have uh, looked at... Uh, at uh, freedom to operate and, um, and et cetera. And we uh, conclude that we are in a very good position because okay. our drug is very original. And also we have biomarkers that nobody else has ever published before. Good, okay, thank you. Steven? Yeah, nice job guys on uh, a top complicated topic very quickly. Um, questions are around kind of your, your runway with the funding as well as the authorizations. So it seems like a lot of the Success is contingent upon uh, whether or not you can get the authorization. So one question is, what do you see that timeline as being, either if you pass the first time or if you have to go through a second round? And compared with your, if you raise the whole round, uh, how much runway will that give you? How many months, how many years? So uh, the good news is that we already have an authorization in the Netherlands. So we can start actually very, very quickly. So that's really decreased risk because there are indeed drugs which are never authorized because there are some holes in the story. And then um, based on the budget, with this amount of money, we can complete the phase one and the phase two A. And that would be in a position really to uh, make, go for an exit. Thank you, Bryce, Philippe. Very small question from somebody. Yes. Francesca. My side, uh, do you have any plan to go for an FDA approval? Um, yes. I mean, as soon as we have a good result from the, the phase uh, two uh, A, then definitely we want to go there because it's a, it's a big market. But we first want to, to start to prove that it's uh, in, uh, it can be to well tolerated with some efficacy in humans before making the cost to go to the FDA. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Convert. Um, we will be in touch with you, of course, with our feedbacks and all the leads uh, that hopefully will, will come forward from this pitch. Of course, uh, I would uh, welcome you to stay online. But now we go from cancer to climate. Edgar's. Uh, floor yes. is your for Digas. When you're yes. ready, I will start the time. Okay, let's copy. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, fantastic. Very good, so we can start that. Hello, everyone. My name is Edgar Skast. I'm Chief Operating Officer at the Digas, the company that is making sure that the railway operators are following the smooth and practical way towards the transition into the green railway. Uh, after a uh, 
uh, discussing with our stakeholders in the industry, we have realized that uh, nearly 60% of operational expenses are eaten up by the fuel costs. The average uh, age of the European ro rolling stock is also uh, old. It's around 30 years of age. And uh, although the main structures of the locomotive can be still used for another 20 years, the old engines are making it very impractical in relation to fuel economy and also the emissions. The high uh, renewal costs result in a very low rate of uh, fleet renewal in Europe. Uh, it is around just 1% uh, is being renewed per year. So you can imagine how long would it take to reach some reasonable results towards this. Our Nismar dual fuel system is the most uh, financially viable solution when we are addressing those problems. Um, the diesel retrofit system consists on a basis of modular uh, concept. Uh, it consists of hardware, uh, software, proprietary software, which is uh, ensuring the highest diesel substitution rate for our system, and uh, telemetry. Telemetry allows the uh, operator to monitor performance of the engine, ensuring that all the maintenance is being done in time, all the problems are being solved, and they can see also the fuel consumption, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the modular concept allows it to be easily installed. Uh, the system uh, is uh, European patent pending for the moment, and that uh, uh, is uh, for our engine control uh, unit system, which is related to software. And uh, the system is compatible with alternative fuel solutions. Uh, we have uh, made uh, four different types of demonstrator locomotives. And uh, one of them was the first gas certified locomotive in Europe, which puts us at the forefront uh, developing the certification in Europe in general, because this field has not been covered before. And the mainline locomotive, the upper picture, what you can see, uh, it was uh, run for 334 days and it cost uh, uh, operator nearly 300,000 euros in fuel. After installing the system, you can save 48% on this particular locomotive. Uh, we save 48% causing payback period just in two years. Of course, that payback period depends on the operational type of the operator. The European market consists of around 20,000 units, which are of age of more than 30 years. Uh, based on the monthly uh, repowering rate, we have estimated that the market uh, could be around 1.9 billion a month. And we are focusing on 10% of the market share, uh, share with 1% being covered over the first five years. We are present in the Europe in uh, five countries, with our largest uh, partners being uh, Enegas in Spain and uh, GRDF in France. Uh, they are operating as the gas distribution companies who are acting as a sort of a, a market enabler for uh, alternative fuel solutions. And our business model, it's rather simple, but sound. We have three main channels to address railway operators. One of them is selling our kit directly to them when they are using the repair divisions after being instructed and trained by our personnel. Uh, another option is that we sell our kits to repair plans who are servicing uh, uh, more railway operators at the same time. And uh, third, uh, main channel for us is the uh, cooperation with a big, a large energy companies when we are taking part in a uh, joint project, when we are developing, for instance, new types of locomotives and in such a way expanding our market. Uh, another way is to directly get fee uh, for telemetry sub subscription, which railway operators, if they choose, they can use. By the way, uh, we have seen that only installing telemetry a solution, the operators are, are already saving some fuel costs just by the control of it. So if we are uh, comparing ourselves to competitors, we can see that both the system costs and installation costs are half of the price. And uh, that results in a higher substitution rate within the industry. And the payback period is uh, from two to four years. Again, that depends on the type of operations the railway operator is carrying because uh, it relates to the fuel consumption if it's a shunter locomotive or mainline locomotive. After installing our system, the operator can expect, and they will get it, uh, the reduction of operational expenses, which will be in a 
in um, fuel cost reduction by 20 to 30 percent. A relatively small investment uh, makes it sure that they are getting the payback period of two to four years. Uh, they are increasing sustainability of their company as they are using the existing fleet already. And as an addition, they are increasing the social responsibility stance on uh, saving on external health costs for the society. Uh, our management team uh, has been in their field over a decade for their roles, and uh, they are being advised by board advisor, Mr. Claudio Rodriguez, who is a general director of infrastructure at Anigas Transporte, who is our partner in Spain. Uh, at the moment, we are requiring investment for uh, adjusting, developing our existing product into the hydrogen use for internal combustion engines. The developments have uh, taken place already. We are working on that uh, together with our partners in Spain, particularly. And then uh, after developing the system for uh, uh, adjusting the system for the use with the hydrogen, we are uh, planning to continue our development into the hydrogen field by attracting additional financing uh, by whether the series A or a sort of exit by 2026. Our investment required is 1.2 million, which is going to be spent in business development, uh, engineering personnel, and uh, components required for uh, making the demonstrator locomotive uh, for the hydrogen market and uh, other minor costs. So that was shortly uh, describing our system, but please do not hesitate to ask questions or contact us because there is so much more to explain about the potential and the actual gains of the system. So we are looking forward to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Edgar. Please stop share your screen so I can see uh -huh. the faces of the jury. Who's, who's having a first question? Rene. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, Edgar. It's very interesting. Um, what, what I missed in your, but maybe you can tell us more about this, is uh, other uh, alternative fuel solutions such as biodiesel or uh, electricity. Yes. And, so, and how your solution uh, is compared to that. Okay, first of all, we have already a market-ready product which is in place, which is gaining traction. That is related to biogas, if you like so. Because uh, when we are talking about natural gas, our system is fully compatible with biogas. There is no difference we can use whether natural gas or biogas. Go ahead, feel free. So what we want to make sure more for the future, that we are adjusting system even more, that we are sure to increase the rate of the hydrogen being used within the system. So now we have started our developments by uh, blending solutions where we want to see how much we can blend, what's the percentage of the hydrogen, but what we want to make sure that we go for 100% of the hydrogen. So that's shortly. These are the, when I'm talking about alternative fuels, these are the solutions what we are looking at. So it's the biogas and hydrogen. And actually what we are looking at is to make this transition for the operators smooth in a way that they can start using the natural gas, which is more available at the moment and the infrastructure is ready for that. And when it is ready for, uh, let's say, infra infrastructure-wise, price-wise for the hydrogen, so they can easily shift to the hydrogen. So this yeah, is a sort of a- question is, sorry to interrupt. Yes. I, 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 um, but I'm, I miss the biodiesel component because those, those uh, Locomotives, they have also diesel uh, um, um, uh, aggregators, or how do you say that? Diesel. Uh, uh, so, why don't don't you have biodiesel in your uh, portfolio? I... Biodiesel. That's uh, because uh, uh, you see that the aim of us is to reduce the diesel at all. What we are aiming for is 100% substitution. And actually we are already, we, we have it. We are in Spain, for example, we are uh, now making the locomotive, which is going to be 100% substitution. So we are not talking about diesel at all. Our aim is to get rid of the diesel completely. Okay, okay. Next okay, question. Thank you, thank you, Edkas, thank you. Re uh, Francesca, yeah. Yes. Um, Ciao, thank you. Um, I would like um, you to tell us a little bit more about your sale um, model. How do you uh, engage uh, with your client and uh, how you intend to evolve your organization uh, in the scale-up phase? 
because you have different type of clients and so and yes um, the here is the big part first of all uh, we are working ourselves with the railway operators and uh, and uh, repairs uh, plants as i already described in our business model so this is our direct approach to them when we're approaching them when we are showing our product where we are selling them uh, making sure they believe us and off we go. Another point is that we are using a large energy companies. For example, a good example for us is in Spain, when we are using an energy company and they are being as the enabler for us because they are the ones uh, trying to sell their product, which is gas, of course. And they are making sure that uh, our connections, for example, they have uh, led to our joint project together with Renfe, which is a uh, largest uh, railway operator in Spain. So we are developing already the project together with them, making sure that uh, we're gonna use our system for a retrofit of the rent to locomotives. So this is sort of, we are approaching the uh, railway operators directly ourselves, but also via the larger channels or more influential channels, so to say, the large corporates who can enable this market for us. Thank, Thank you, you Edgar. Steven Paniotis, Steven. Yeah, thanks, Jan, and thanks, Edgar. Uh, my question is around supply chain. Obviously, natural gas is a very hot topic across Europe right now, and so there's the question of uh, whether it's hydrogen or methane. Um, what does your supply chain look like, uh, and how has that been affected in the past few months? The past two months, the past two months, of course, it has been uh, quite a rapid spikes and we everybody is aware of that. But what we do, actually, we are uh, communicating with our suppliers. For example, now in uh, Estonia, we were communicating this well with the supplier and we uh, have the agreement with them, uh, sort of an agreement that they are keeping the price on the average basis. They are not following the market, exact market price at the moment because we are foreseeing the price to drop. And uh, of course, this is just a seasonal change for the moment. But uh, in more specifically, I could answer your question. That is also the reason why we are involved with the large corporates, especially in a gas distribution, because they are the ones particularly interested into the price. So we can better understand the market forecasting in this respect. And also they are the ones who are helping us to deal with the supply chain. Because for example, uh, this is a very good example of ours, the Spain again, as we are working with them, we are not being concerned about supply chain because they are already taking care of it for us. And this is this is how we work. We try to that's that's what I say. We try to involve the large corporates to help us because we see ourselves still as a small startup company. So we need this leverage what they have. Thank you, Paniotis. Last question. You're on mute. You're on mute. I'll try to read the lips. Maybe. Yes. So, um, yeah. So, so I wanted to ask a little bit. Can you give us a bit more information about um, the patent you referred? Is it only? Is it about the fuel? Is it about the control? What What is the uh, in the patent? Yes. The Euro patent, a European patent pending at the moment, is related to the engine control solution, which is actually the one ensuring the highest uh, substitution rate, and that is our proprietary solution. What we have made. Uh, additionally, we have submitted also the world patent, and now in April we have to submit the national ones, which like part of this world patent we are submitting for national ones. Uh, the national ones we are going to submit uh, considering the market which we are focusing on, and uh, regarding the market, that was also the reason why exactly we have chosen these four types of locomotives, what we have made, because this is the uh, largest uh, number of locomotives available for this retrofit market in that area what we are focusing on. Thank you, Edgars. That's it already. It's a short but sweet and but an introduction to hopefully more follow-up. Um, thank you, Edgars. So thank you very much. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> thank you. And please, jury, take a deep breath because we are going into the next startup. Magellanes, if I pr pronounce it right, uh, from the oceans vertical, please, when you're ready. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Alejandro yeah. Marquez and I'm business development uh, of, of Maya Renewables. We are a Spanish company focused on the exploitation of the oceans as a renewable energy. So did you know that the oceans are the largest resource of renewable energy? 
Maybe you didn't, but what you might know is that there is not a system on the market that can exploit this huge resource of energy. And this is mainly because the oceans carry so much energy that at the same time are very destructive. This is why we need an, a system that is robust and at the same time is easy to maintain. And of course, cost effective. We have focused on this issue, trying to use already mature technologies that are on the market. In this case, we have focused on the naval industry and the women industry. And we have combined them in the simplest way possible, which is basically installing two windmills under a boat. So basically what we have is two windmills with all, with all its mechanical and electrical components encapsulated in a secure, safe and robust ship. This way we achieve a low risk in innovation wise, and of course, a low cost in construction and components, having a huge supply chain on the, on the market on a European level. So this is how the system works. It's very, very simple with very little moving parts. So we split the, the tidal currents that rise and fall every six hours. This way, we're able to exploit the one and only 100% predictable renewable energy. This way, uh, we turbine the, these flows of, of water and we send the energy to a subsea cable to a substation on shore, just as a windmill would do. The market for this type of energy is huge. This type of energy occurs everywhere in the world, especially where, where seas are connected one to another, such as the UK, um, the, the Sea of China, Canada, the US, and of course, uh, in Spain, also in the Strait of Gibraltar. The market is so huge that in 2030, it's expected to uh, have been installed 1.5 gigas of tidal energy. And this, of course, is supported with tariffs from the UK, China, and Canada right now, that, and, and many more in the, in the coming years. Our expansion will begin in the UK, where we have already secured a 30 megawatt array in Wales, and we are securing a 50 megawatt array in the Orkneys. This comes, of course, with the tariff that we all need for this development. And this tariff was set by the UK this past December, setting a 20 million a year um, incentive that will last for 15 years. This is a 300 million reinforced, re reinforcement on tidal energy from the UK government. The business model is also very simple. We focused on the sale of ready to use tidal energy devices, and then of course, carry out the o and for our clients. This way we exploit each part of the value chain that we had to develop to get where we are. Here you can see a picture of our full-scale device in the Orkney Islands in Scotland. And at the very top, you can see a, a small vessel that will be used for maintenance. This of course, not only reduces costs, but also time of, of uh, stopping time during this maintenance. Our competition is also key, of course, for the success of our industry. And we can divide the competition in two types of technologies, submerged systems and floating systems. Submerged systems work great because they, of course, don't have a visual impact, but the issue is that they cannot be maintained easily. This is why these systems have not really evolved and have this huge issue that uh, maintenance is really costly. Then regarding floating systems, there are three main players. Um, we are the only ones that can offer a full access to the machinery from the inside so that we can access all the mechanical and electrical components in any type of, type of water. Also, we are the ones with a le a less moving parts and therefore reducing our costs. Having this competitive advantage, and of course the huge market that we mentioned, we plan to have sold 90 platforms by 2030. And of course, carry out the maintenance of these platforms throughout their, their, their lifespan during 25 years. Of course, we could only do this with the best team. So we have developed and we have gathered a small team of excellent professionals that each one is focused on a different task. This way, when we need to, to solve a specific issue, our team or the key member of our team will subcontract and guide external teams that have come with us since the beginning of the technology. So if we want to resolve an issue focused on, on the naval structure, we would hire 
enable engineer that will uh, focus on that specific issue. And this system carries out through the whole value chain. This way we have a very agile team and we can choose the, the best professionals in the industry. Right now we are racing, um, we're in the middle of a, of a racing a round opportunity of 6 million. I would take the technology where it is right now, where we have a system that is operating and, it's, and that it has been validated in the Ognis and the European Marine Energy Center. And we take that technology and bring it to the market, being able to exploit that huge resource of energy. And of course, that, that tariff that right now the UK is offering as, a, as an excellent opportunity. Of course, we only managed to do this uh, with our clients. In this sense, we have letters of intent signed by the biggest players in, in Europe, such as Engie, Iberdrola, or Enel. And thank you very much for your time, and I'll be very happy to answer any question from the panel. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Well under time, so there's more time for questions. Uh, please stop sharing your screen. Yes. And uh, who's up? Panayotis, maybe. Yes. Uh, yes, I have a few questions. First of all, okay, it looks quite original. So I guess you have submitted patents on yes. for the concept. Okay. So you submitted European on the whole concept? Um, well, we have submitted pat patents, but it is true that most of the, until we, we extend to the market, most of the, our solutions, we have kept, kept them as, as trade secrets. Okay. So uh, we have few patents that are very generic, mm -hmm. uh, but most of the innovations are kept as, as uh, secrets in the company. And of course, we will patent them once we go out in the market. Okay, uh, a little bit about the um, uh, differences with the competition and cost. Now, now one question before going to that, I wanted to ask a little bit on the installation and the maintenance mm -hmm. and, and how it's going to be the agreement with the ships. I mean, because it's something that is installed on a ship, which is quite different from, from the rest. Um, what is this cost? I mean, um, uh, I mean, you, you, you said that you're going to have 90 platforms, 180 million, so you're going to be generating 2 million um maybe around some number of if you give up like about hours so how is your uh, let's say a typical business model on a ship how does that work and how how you know except from the energy companies that are going to be selling it how is going to be the business model with the ship owners what's 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 yes, uh, so give us a bit more information on that yeah so so um maybe because a ship look like looks like a ship it looks like we will sell this technology to ship owners but it's not, it's only the, the, that we have uh, used the technology from the naval industry. So the system is like a windmill, it stays there and it's, it's a, a power station basically. So uh, our clients will be utilities, the same way they uh, um, finance and develop arrays for windmills uh, or solar panels, they will do the same with our technology. So our technology is fixed in place and it's only floating because we want to have access, but they could be also fixed in place um, as a windmill would. So it's just a, a, a new resource of, of energy that is, of course, not correlated to wind and solar. So it's perfectly complementary and, of course, key for our uh, to achieving net zero and, and, and key for uh, our clients, utilities that want to generate when no one else is generating, of course, because this way you have a higher price of, of energy. So it's like on a buoy. How are you going to install it? Is it near the shore? If it's yes, so it's, it's, it's very near to the source. So we exploit tidal currents. This, this currents occur with, um, with geographic accidents when tides rise and fall. So this is, this is a huge amount um, of moving water that comes every six hours in one direction and then on the opposite. And, right. and yes, the, the platform is fixed in place. We have a subsea cable, same as a windmill does, uh, as an offshore wind, of course, that is connected uh, from the, each platform to a substation onshore. And, and we constantly pour energy into the system. Okay, I see. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank Stephen? you. Stephen? Or, yeah, Stephen? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Alejandro. Uh, my question is around finance. Obviously, this is pretty capital intensive, uh, hard tech. Um, with kind of the, the six million raise, what is that used towards? And then for each of those, I think you said 90 projects over the next eight years. How is each project financed? Is it similar to solar and wind, where sometimes it's project by project? Or how do you plan to, to finance the, the growth? Yes, so regarding the six million, um, 
These are basically to come where we are right now, where we have a validated technology to take the next step, which is, which is certification. So certification is key for the next question, of course, which is being able to be bankable and, and insurable, right? So uh, banks will, uh, yeah, so future developments um, uh, will be financed as a project finance uh, development, same as a windmill or, or, a, or, or a solar uh, array. So in this case, uh, we'll not develop 90 projects, we'll uh, have sold 90 platforms. So for example, the, the first project that we are developing now has 20 platforms. The second one that we're securing in the UK has 30. And, and this, of course, will come um, as, as the technology becomes more mature, the expansion will, will grow. And, and yes, regarding the finance, it will be the, the same. So we are entering a market that is already there. So there are already, already financers um, for these projects. Although, as we said, uh, the key is to sell the devices to utilities and uh, because well, that's, that's their uh, business and they will focus on, on the finance of the project. Francesca? Yes, sir. thank you. Um, I would like to, to hear something about your exit plan, Alejandro. I mm -hmm. mean, when and how uh, you think that investor may uh, reach a profitable exit? Yes, of course. Well, um, we are very open uh, to speak to different investors and to adapt to their necessities of exit. Of course, the, the company now has a value that will be, of course, multiplied once we have reached that market, once we have reached those certifications. So that, that could be a good time uh, for an exit, although we do not have uh, that hurry uh, to do the exit if, we want, if they, our investors want to, to be maintained. Also, for that exit, um, we are very open to different uh, possibilities, which are, uh, of course, a, a possible IPO, in, in the in the European stock market and uh, yeah and some and, and bringing in new investors to to fill in their their space so we are very open in that sense okay thank you thank you Rene any questions you're muted I know yeah oh, uh, so you were sometimes frozen uh, Alejandro so uh, but oh, yeah. uh, well my question is uh, about the actual status of the company, because it, it is for me unclear. Do you already sell those installations? Are they yes. already out developed? Um, no. So what we have right now is one full scale prototype working in the in the Orkney Islands in the north of Scotland. So that okay. is the European Marine Energy Centre. And what we're doing with it, this device is uh, testing and improving the technology so that we can now do the, all the certifications needed to go to the market. Okay. So we are in pre-commercial states right now. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Rene. Please, please note, Alejandro, that, that you were not frozen from my side, so I think it was your internet, Rene, so okay. don't worry, Alejandro. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jan. Time for one final question. Last chance, no more questions for you. Thank you, Alejandro. We look forward to staying in touch with you in the follow-up. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, the show must go on. Well, thank you very so, much for the, for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. We are, we are at 11 o'clock and we are good on schedule. So I want to thank everybody again for, for uh, being here with us. And I really want to... Uh, and underscore that there are two great more companies coming up and some very worthwhile feedback uh, from the judges. So everybody stay tuned. And uh, let's go to the next proposition. Daniel, uh, the floor is yours for Manobi. When you're ready, I will start uh, the time. Thank you very much, Jan. Let me... Um on my screen. Can you see my screen? Not yet. No rush, we'll make it work. Yeah. Yes. Looks great. Okay. When you're ready. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, my name is uh, Daniel Androse and I'm, I'm the CEO of a 
company named Manubi Africa. We are based in, uh, in Africa with this name, as you can understand. And uh, uh, our business is to um, uh, link farmers to value chain, organize farmers' linkages to value chain and give them access to credit uh, in order to uh, be more efficient into this value chain. Um, go to the next slide, please. Uh, here is, a, is Mr. Yaya Diallo. Um, he's a small older farmer. Uh, basically, a small older farmer holds uh, he's, uh, someone who is cropping on less than two hectares. And uh, he's among the farmers who, um, the, who, owns, who crops on 25% of the arable land in the world and produce 33%, 30% of the world food, uh, food consumption. But uh, as all of these farmers, as small well farmers, uh, uh, Mr. Diallo faces important financial uh, issues. He don't have access to credit, and he cannot uh, uh, finance his uh, his uh, his uh, crop, uh, his uh, inputs, his seeds. So that uh, his uh, product productivity is deeply uh, affected by uh, this situation. And uh, uh, today, uh, his productivity is a third to the product activity of any other small farmer in other countries. Um, so what the solution we are we provide to address this issue is a system which uh, make give a formal picture of this uh, of these farmers uh, to banks and to financial institutions. So in order to do that we uh, organize we set up a system which is doing a complete credit scoring of the farmers based on the mapping and the profiling of every single farmer. We contract this farmer when they are organized, we contract these farmers to the market by setting up their linkages with industries, off takers, input suppliers. And when we have this ecosystem organized, we bring it to banks and financial institutions to uh, decide to finance these farmers. When this is done, when the banks have decided to finance the farmers who are contracted into the system, then the platform we set up is organize all the credit management and will de-risk all the credit and standment bar for the bank based on the monitoring of the activities of the farmers on the ground using different technologies and, and, a, group, and, a, and a network of agents which are, who are providing proximal services and who are monitoring what the farmers are doing on the ground. So for instance, the farmer receives inputs, the, term, the input supplier deliver inputs to the farmers, we optimize this distribution channel. When the input is delivered, the agents on the ground can trace the activity. And at the end of the day, we secure the payment to the input suppliers. And the system goes up to the, to the off-taker where we secure all the harvest and we, we channel this harvest toward, this, uh, toward, the, toward the industry, toward the, uh, the off-taker. And the off-taker pays back Within the bank for the for the sales of the for the for the purchase of the products to the banks, and we secure the transaction, the, pay, the repayment of the credit to the banks. So this system already is already in place, and uh, uh, it uses certain a certain number of technology. Part of them has been developed with uh, the support of the EU H uh, twenty twenty program, combining the use of digital uh, 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 air observation, uh, IoT artificial intelligence and a proximal presence, which is ensured by a group of youth, which are, we are training the community recruited by Accelerant to set up their own service, service uh, proximal service companies, companies to the small order farmers, to assist the small order farmer. And we have a control center, which send data to these agents and to the farmers to trace all the activity along, along the value chain. So what is the, the result? So we tested that during uh, several years, several months right now, yes, two years. And what is the, the value proposal for the farmers that we, we bring with that solution? It's only to say, okay, we bring to you all the package. We bring, we give you access to the credit to our bank partners. And then we, you can, with that, with the solution we give to you, we reduce your, your, your uh, operation cost by optimizing all your inputs access, all your seeds access, all the service that you need. And that increase your yield because you can so what you can so on time and you have the proper advice to adopt the best practices in order to produce the high levels and show the high levels of the higher level of yield. 
Uh, right now, with our result, we, we can see that we reduce the the, uh, the production cost by 12 percent on average. We did that on several uh, several value chains, including rice, groundnut, millet, sorghum. We increase the yield by 120, and you can see that the impact of the income of uh, Mr. Y, Mr. Yaya Diallo is important because from uh, 7, 530 euros he in, uh, of income he has today, we, we increase his income by 1,870. 1, so it's 880, 80, 80, 80, 800, it's 1,800 euros. So that's a huge uh, a, a transformation, which is included in, in injected through this uh, platform to the small the farmers. But there is also value that we bring to the other value chain actors along the chain. For the bank, the solution secure a portfolio, bring to the bank a portfolio of clients which are uh, a good quality for the, for the bank, which are, who are de-risked, which are de-risked. We reduce the operation, the management cost of the uh, portfolio, uh, the, the portfolio management cost for the banks, which is something which is important for them. For the off-takers, we in, we augment we optimize the value chain to the to the uh, to the off takers. An example of uh, one of the off takers in Rio or River Senegal, we are using a, a rice miller. Uh, cannot secure more than eight months of uh, of uh, of uh, of paddy rice to transform his rice. So we bring that to twelve months. For the insurer, we de-risk the uh, we decouple the risk insurer for by the climate risk from the risk due to the malpractices. We reduce the number of claims with the best practices we have the farmers to accept, to, to adopt. And for the input supplier, as I say to you, we optimize uh, is a distribution channel towards these farmers and we secure all these payment. Uh, this solution, this platform also relies on the network of region. It is a huge potential of job creation that we have already uh, developed uh, also in this uh, in the system. What is the uh, market today? Uh, as I say, there is a, a market. It's a market of 500 million smallholders one across minute. the world, with a financial gap of one one euro, uh, one one of uh, one thousand one hundred and forty billion of uh, of euros, and we are targeting the market in sub, the market in South Africa, South Southern Africa, with 48 million, uh, 48 million market in South Africa, on which we want to uh, reach 33 uh, percent of the market. Uh, our business model is uh, is a fee or a subscription or a fee or commission on every transaction done by the farmers, the off takers, the input service providers, and the insurers along the, during the cropping season. Uh, and uh, our team is uh, is uh, we have a dedicated team uh, in this project, very well experienced in the African market, but also in the in different sectors, in particular in IT. And uh, myself, I have a background in in agriculture. Uh, we have uh, this market. The proper project we have is a project we have with a certain level of high level competition. Uh, a company like Apollo, for instance, recently uh, 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 raised 40 million euros to develop 40 million dollars to develop uh, his, his platform in uh, in Eastern Africa, and reach 180,000 80, growers within the next two years. Uh, right now, we already have 55,000 farmers, which is trading our platform. We have 90, uh, 90. 90,000 uh, 90, uh, hectare map. We, uh, as you can see, we have a, a, a small portion of it already financed by banks. So we depend to the bank acceptance on financing the farmers. Uh, but we already raised 5.5 million of, of credit uh, financing line from these banks. And we have contract with a large financial institution, development institution as like World Bank, Islamic Development Bank, uh, but also private bank for the next uh, years and next two years for 1.11 million uh, uh, euros of financing line that will be uh, served to incorporate uh, a certain of farmers within our platform. Uh, so we what Daniel, our roadmap we need is to round to, up. Yeah, our roadmap is, 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 is really uh, to accelerate our market penetration in the, in, in the, in the African market. Uh, we want also to take on a part of our business, uh, uh, of the business lending side of our, of our, of uh, of uh, of this uh, of this platform, so we we are we are targeting a quick uh, a quick uh, pro, uh, acceleration of our market and uh, in, within the next year. So we are looking for 2.5 million. You may, may need to develop our marketing uh, in a marketing operation in the in the in this area. Uh, recruit some staff, uh, develop our platform, and reinforce our our country office uh, in the in the in the in the in these different countries. And we already have a cash flow. 
of 1.1 1. 1, 1 million euros. And we are we have strong ambition to develop this business within the next two, two years. Sorry, and thank you for sorry to be too long, Jen, and, and thank you. No worries, Danielle. Just a little bit less time for the question. That means please stop sharing your screen. And maybe Stephen, you have a first question or feedback to Daniel. Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, I, I've met with Apollo in Kenya, and I was thinking about them when I read about your business model. It looks very similar. So, how do you compete against someone uh, like Apollo? Like you said, just raised forty million. Um, seems to offer similar services. Are you competing in different geographies? Are you competing head to head, or, or what does it look like? Mm -hmm. Uh, we are competing in different geography. Uh, we are in Western Africa, uh, mainly, and, and, and the, uh, I would say the financial ecosystem in uh, Eastern Africa is much more agile than in Western Africa. That's clearly uh, one point on which we have some experience in reducing uh, the countries that we are targeting, like Nigeria and Central Africa, or big countries like that. We have a, uh, reducing a good experience. Another thing is that uh, in the case of Apollo, Apollo takes the risk today of the of the lending one, of the lending uh, of the lending to the small farmer. In our case, we started from another strategy, which is to embark more banks to take this risk. So we are already connected to a network of banks, and we are pushing the solution within this bank uh, uh, to, for this bank to adopt it. So which means we have a potential of extending our market, which is there. Uh, we have, but it requires much more time, and that's why our strategy is also to accelerate this momentum by be part, by en engaging part of this lending needs uh, ourselves. So we want to be as well a, a little bit as Apollo, the lending directly to the farmers, but also continue to push our strategy, our relationship with banks so that we can enlarge the financing uh, uh, the financing capacity of our platform. Great, thank you. Thank you. Francesca? Yes. Ciao, Daniel. So I uh, understand that there is a lot of work to be done from the field. So I would like uh, to hear who is in charge uh, to map and profile and then organize uh, uh, the farmers. And, uh, uh, and if you also can tell, uh, tell us who are the agent and who is paying the agent. All right. So we, we, we set up a, a system which is named Accelerant Academy to train, to recruit youth within the community of farmers. Uh, so they are children, they are children of the farmers, and they are trained to they are using and trained to use our, our, our solution to assist the farmers to adopt the best practices when they receive the credit to adopt the best practices and to monitor all the data. And we have a supervision, a control room which is directly connected with a call center, which is connected to these agents on the ground, this constant connection, which gives them advices and, and guides them to do the job efficiently. Our data intelligence system is also there to control the data quality, which is, uh, which is uh, gathered by these agents on the ground. The earth observation solution that we develop, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, IoT systems that we develop, and all these digital solutions we have engaged into the system, are also there to control that the quality of the data is there. So it's a, it's a, it's a system we rely on, 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 on a strategy to develop this use uh, net, a group of network as a group of service provider, you, as a co a companies, smaller or the micro companies, which we directly provide services to the farmers in the community, but also we will be in charge to collect the data to feed the platform. Thank you, Daniel, Francesca. To Short questions, two short answers, please, Paniotis. Yes, just, uh, I don't know if it was a time I was looking at the financials and on the gross profit, you show a negative for the next two years. Is it a negative gross profit or is it a positive? No, we are negative during the next two years and we will be positive during the last, the, the third year. The third year, at this stage, at this stage we will wish, we want to cover to, uh, to reach 2.3 million farmers. Uh, and we will we will have including the lending uh, the lending the business uh, the business uh, uh, linked to the business uh, to the lending one the lending segment of the value chain with a ten billion dollar of, of 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 income at that stage we will have a, a margin of eight percent so right now we are investing massively 
because we 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 have to map more farmers because the transformation the uh, as I can say that the uh, the conversion rate of uh, of uh, the map of farmers in farmers who are accepted by the banks to be financed is 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 low. So we want to accelerate it. So we 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 have to to map more farmers, and in the same time we have to increase this conversion rate. That's why we want to engage uh, the company in the in the, in the lending uh, in the lending segment. Last question for from Rene. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. More on a uh, tip. Uh, uh, I think the United Nations uh, has an kind of uh, I call it an access to finance program. They, they want to stimulate the, the access to finance in, in, in those areas. Uh, do, do you have such a context there? And maybe yeah. you can, yeah. okay. Yeah, uh, well, last Monday, IFC, which is uh, the uh, Internal Finance Corporations comes to, came to our office. They are providing a financing line to banks with uh, a target which is small, small agriculture, climate change, uh, food security, food sovereignty, and there are problem they face is that they don't have any metrics on how this is used. This funding, first of all, just just to set up the line, how what are the metrics that the bank can put on the table for them to really do the uh, the, uh, the the evaluation of the capacity of the bank to absorb this uh, this uh, this financing line. And so they say, and they don't know also, and they would like to know how this financing line is used. So the, 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 they ask us if we can now, the strategy with the, the discussion with us is how we can use the platform as a kind of technical assistant, assistance or let's say fiduciary agency for them to uh, manage the financing line, to trace and monitor the use of the financing line that they provide to financial institutions. Yeah, yeah. So I had a similar discussion with uh, several with uh, ICD, which is the, uh, the, the the financial branch branch of uh, of uh, Islamic Development Bank for a line of twenty million dollars that they want to give to another. Yeah, yeah. I think in in that area that those institutions can be he very helpful for you to bring your business uh, further. Uh, thank you, uh, Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. That's it. Um, to be in touch, to be uh, to be continued. Uh, but first, uh, we have our last e pitch for today. Everybody, stay here because we have a fantastic <laughs> company from Patricio. When you're ready. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Can you see my yes my screen? Okay, perfect. Okay, well, uh, hello and good morning, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Patricio Alemani. I'm the CEO of Driver and Go. Driver and Go is a Spanish-based company, and uh, we have developed a, a software that is helping uh, to save human lives. Every year is dying more than 1 million people uh, in road accidents due to human errors. So that's crazy numbers, uh, um, well, at, at least for, uh, for us uh, and for, for the European Union. And they, they decide uh, uh, to approve a law to reduce all these road accidents by uh, forcing the car manufacturers uh, to implement a camera-based driver monitoring system into all the car cells uh, by all these car manufacturers in 2026. So this technology is going to be mandatory in all the cars that they are going to be uh, selling in Europe by that time. Okay, so this is a huge opportunity that uh, we have in front of us. Um, uh, the last uh, four years, uh, we have been developing a, a driver monitoring software powered by artificial intelligence and computer vision. And what we do with this software is to check the status of the driver uh, to see if there are some anomalies and um, warn them about the risk. 
Okay, so uh, we study which one were uh, most of the uh, cases or, or activities that the driver were doing when the, they have these uh, uh, road accidents. And uh, that's why we decide to develop a, a kind of software, software to, to advise them or to warn them about the risk. So with this software, we are detecting things like, for example, distractions, distraction because they are using mobile phones, because they are paying too much uh, or long attention to the console of the, of the, of the car. We can detect uh, if the driver is falling asleep, drowsiness, fatigue, etc. Our our solution com compared with the competitors that are in the market. Uh, we need to take in account that this is a, this is a, a novel technology. Uh, um, first of all, uh, we are uh, we have lower uh, uh, fares than the average of the competitors uh, in, in the market. We also have some advantages, uh, technical advantages, because our software uh, can work with the with the camera in any position uh, 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 around the car, um, while the other competitors uh, they've got a fixed position for the camera, or they have to do further developments. Uh, this takes us uh, into a, a good advantage because we are more flexible and we can easy to adapt our solution to the client's needs. The market. Uh, well, uh, the market is uh, growing very fast due to the, this law that the European Union uh, approved. Uh, regarding uh, to you know uh, to to force all the car manufacturers to implement this solution in the car in the cars, so it's growing uh, in a, in a rate of ten percent per year. It's estimated that they will reach uh, about two million dollars, uh, two billion dollars by twenty twenty seven, and by that time, uh, we would like uh, we are expecting to have more than five percent of the global market. Our business model, our, our business model is quite simple. Is, okay, uh, we are gonna have, uh, we are gonna license our, so our software to sell it to the car manufacturers. But in which way? Uh, we will charge them a certain amount of money uh, per a manufacturer car that is including our driver monitoring software solution. We are already in, in contact with uh, car manufacturers uh, such as uh, Hyundai Europe, uh, BMW, and even some electrical car manufacturers uh, from Turkey, uh, Vietnam, and United, United States. Our team. Uh, our team is based uh, mainly uh, from people uh, from the private sector. Um, uh, uh, for instance, my, my, my case, I got more than 20 years experience in the private sector and uh, I created a company 15 years ago and, and I have been running this company successfully until, until now. We also uh, appoint two, two, two entrepreneurs uh, for the advisory board uh, and this, uh, these ones got more than 20 years experience and they are coming from the automotive sector and the software development sector. Our roadmap. Uh, our roadmap is divided in different phases. Uh, we have the, the first phase uh, where we, are, uh, we want to raise a, a million euros. Um, this is to, to reach as fast as we can uh, to the European market, which is the one that is, you know, uh, is gonna be mandatory by 2026, all this uh, um, uh, software about monitoring. And what, how we are gonna use uh, that money? We are gonna use that money to, to increase our, our technical uh, team. So we've got more capabilities to reach all these uh, car manufacturers, but mainly we are gonna use it for, for marketing and for the, for the business, Unit, okay, because we need to, uh, to tell the market that we are here, uh, our expertise, uh, uh, the features of our uh, of our software, and, and we need to reach as soon as possible of these uh, end users. 
in two years time, uh, we are thinking about to jump into the Asia market, which is one of the biggest ones. And for that, uh, we, we estimate that we are gonna need 2.5 million euros. And once again, to enlarge our, our technical team so we can develop new new feature of our of our uh, software even a feature particular feature for our clients and of course we need to make a huge effort in the in our uh, business unit and marketing uh, to reach one minute to, uh, to take our our uh, solution to this uh, to this market even we were thinking about uh, maybe to cooperate with another with another partners that uh, I'm, I'm using the synergies that they got in that uh, in that area. Okay, by two, 2027, uh, we expect to have five percent, at least five percent of the global market, and is uh, where we are uh, expected to have the exit for the investor and for ourselves. Okay, and uh, when, when that time comes. We will th we will think about uh, if go for an IPO uh, after two years and look for more investor or just to to exit and sell the, the company. And this is the last slide. Uh, in this slide, you can see uh, two of our competitors in the market, and I would like you to focus on the on on the last investment that they received. That was the last year, late last year, and they received uh, both of them around 20 million euros for the same technology that we, we have developed. And that's it all from my side. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the presentations and, and the, uh, I, it was clear about the huge business opportunity that I, I presented. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricio. Please stop sharing your screen. And then I give the word to the jury Francesca. Yes. Buenos dias, Patricio. Thank you very much. I uh, would like to know if there is um, any IP on your uh, uh, technology and how it, um, it may be difficult for car uh, manufacturer to develop their own technology. Uh, well, uh, the car manufacturers are not developing the, the, their own technology none of them is, is doing, okay? They are implemented uh, technologies from, uh, from, from the competitors that I show in the, in the scheme. Regarding the, the IPR, uh, we, we ordered the consultancy company uh, to do, to deliver it to us the freedom to operate. And we did already, and we have that document in place and that there is, uh, we've got freedom to operate. So uh, we will use the first money to, to, to patent our solutions. But even like that, our solution, this is software solution and is, uh, is changing all the time. We are improving the solutions uh, every time. Okay, so even like that, even if we can look for a patent uh, to, to keep that uh, solution uh, yeah. like that, it's gonna be so difficult, okay? Very clear, thank you. Panayotis. Yes, well, my question is, uh, as far as the accuracy and repeatability of, the, of your system and how it's compared with the competitors, and how many samples you have tested to have this accuracy and repeatability? Uh, we have, uh, we didn't compare with our competitors, our, our clients did, okay? And they were quite, quite happy uh, with, the, with the results that we have, and that's why we are in conversation with them, okay? Um, and which one was the other question? Sorry, it's the um, is the number of samples. I mean, you know, uh, the, the, we've got thousands of samples because we have test already in thousands of kilometers, mm -hmm. uh, and even we have uh, uh, test our solutions in autonomous vehicles. Okay, so uh, regarding that, uh, we've got plenty of uh, of data sets. To, to, to use all, all the, our algorithms or to test all our algorithms. Okay, thank you. Steven, René? Steven, yes. Sure, thanks, Patricio. Uh, I've invested in a telematics company that uh, has a lot of similarities, and so my questions are kind of compared to that. But uh, one, do you see more value in your hardware um, or in the, the kind of back-end software? Uh, we don't have hardware, okay? We don't develop hardware. We are a software company. 
okay, the hardware is developed by people that is doing the, the cameras, okay, that, that we are in touch with them because it's the hardware that we are using for our for our solutions and uh, for the for the platform that we have to process all the all the deep learning and all the artificial intelligence algorithms. We are we are adapting our software to the different uh, hardware solutions. Okay, we are not a hardware company. We haven't got the potential to develop the, the platform because for example, uh, uh, so far we have embedded all the solutions in NVIDIA. Okay, we cannot compete against NVIDIA. We cannot compete against in, uh, Intel. Okay, so we need to partner with them, like uh, with, the, with the camera uh, manufacturers uh, to implement the whole solution. And, and some of, the, some of our, our end users uh, want us to develop uh, the solution using this kind of camera, the, with this kind of uh, camera manufacturer, and our solution with this kind of uh, processor uh, platform uh, to, 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 to run our algorithm. So it's sometimes it even is, is uh, imposed by, by, the, by the client that they want to do it like that. Okay, great. And second question. Uh, are, they tip are you expecting installations to be um, in pre-production, like with the car manufacturers, or these aftermarket solutions that once the car is already produced, they would then be installed? I think we have a technical issue. <laughs> Let's let's wait thirty can, seconds. Can, oh, can the, Patricio, uh, sorry, you were you were you were not there. Hello. Yeah, can you please restart with the answer of your question? Okay, uh, sorry. Well, uh, our solution is going to be embedded in the in the new manufacturer cars. Okay, but doesn't mean that can we can develop a, a, a solution for the system vehicles that you can uh, place it like uh, the Tonton, Okay, something like that. That, that, that's no problem for us to do that. Great, thank you. René. Yeah, uh, Patricio, uh, thank you. Very interesting and uh, very welcome technology. But uh, could you explain more about the exact claim of your technology? Because what is now the claim? By using it, you can detect 80% uh, of the drivers not being uh, alert or, or saving 50% uh, le uh, less accidents. Uh, what is your claim? Uh, if I understand this, uh, which one is the advantage for the markets or? or... No, the claim I didn't understand use... very well your questions. No, the, what I meant is uh, you, you develop this technology, but but by using this technology, there, there are, for example, 50% less accidents or 100% detection of, of not alert, uh, being not alert drivers. And, 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 how, and, sorry, and how does the intervention work? Because you notice that a driver is uh, not alert and then you have a method to alert the person okay. uh, 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 with this kind of solutions, uh, the European Union is expecting to reduce the, the road accident uh, around 40%, 40, 50 percent. OK, yeah. And uh, how, how we are going to reduce that? OK, we detect we detect in, in real time that the, the driver is, for example, falling asleep. The closing is that, that happened to me when I'm driving. OK, so we, we make like a, a beep, like, a, for example, when you are not using your seatbelt, when you are not using your seatbelt, yeah, yeah, okay. it's beeping you uh, to, to alert you that you're not using it. So we, we will use the same method. OK, for example, if, if the driver is looking at the console and is not looking forward and is looking at something, you know, uh, of the mobile or something like that, will make a beep to alert him that he, he took yeah, yeah, okay, from okay. looking at other places, okay? And for example, with this solution as well, uh, the car manufacturers wants to, to reduce the cost of manufacturing cars because with our solution, we can detect also that they're wearing the, the, the seatbelt. So they don't need additional inputs to, to be implemented in the seat uh, to detect that the car driver is not, is not using the seatbelt, okay? So they, yeah, yeah. they want to reduce the cost of the of the car manufacturers as well. 
Yeah. Thank you. And is your claim the last Sorry. question? Very short, short question, Rene. Yeah. Is is then your technology uh, and you, that claim you have um, higher or better than your competitors? Well, regarding the points that I said in our uh, unique value proposition is we are cheaper, okay? And in some cases we've got uh, uh, advantages about, for example, the position of the camera that they have to do new development, uh, developments and we can work with a different position of the camera around the, around the, uh, around the car. So um, we are more flexible and, and we can easily adapt Okay, but the other, uh, regarding the technology itself about detecting uh, drowsiness and all the things, we are uh, similar, okay? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Patricio, another testimony to the quality and the potential of the companies in the Horizon Results platform. Thank you so much uh, for, to all the speakers. Uh, for uh, um, this, these very short and, 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 and sweet and, and, and fiery presentations. As I say uh, many times, these are but introductions to more in-depth conversations with potential investors. So I very much look forward to the follow-up. And that's why I also want to notify you, the participants, to bear with us because there will be a survey shown on the screen soon. Uh, wherein you can uh, uh, give your feedback and you're interested to a follow-up. Before doing that, though, I want to thank the speakers, uh, the jury members, uh, for your time and your, your, your energy. And maybe I want to give all of you the floor to maybe in, in one or two minutes, give a general feedback or general takeaway uh, to the uh, 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 startups, uh, which they can um, use for their next uh, uh, pitches. Um, maybe Francesca, you already yes, have some. But, I mean, a very short uh, tip uh, from my from my side. At the end, uh, I mean, for uh, making uh, a great uh, pitch is all about products. Uh, so you did a lot of improvements. Uh, only in one week, uh, you have huge space for uh, uh, giving better and better presentation. You did a very good um, job. Uh, so well done. Thank you. Who's next, Stephen? Yeah, thanks everyone. Like you said, Jan, seven minutes is kind of the preview uh, to the movie. And so uh, you're kind of looking for one or two things that is uh, a hook for more information. And uh, a few of them had that. I look forward to following up with a few of the companies. So nice job, everyone. Rene Paniotis. Paniotis. Uh, thank you. Yeah, great pitches, but very great quality. I think um, I've seen uh, very nice, uh, very novel, I would say most of them are very novel uh, products and solutions. Uh, yeah, and my comment in generally, there may be some few suggestions that we'll give also to, to, to most of the, of the teams. Um, but definitely one of the things that it, it applies for all, I think, is a little bit more work on the on the financials and the business models uh, that you know that has to be a little bit more clear in generally. Thank you, Tene. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we, we saw this morning uh, real solutions for real problems, and I think that that is uh, interesting because there will be then. And uh, potentially high uh, market. Uh, what I find in general a point of attention is uh, uh, there are all kinds of claims made, but that you can uh, prove the claims you made and that they are real, uh, already got validated more or less, or, or more than less. And, and that, that makes that you have already intrinsic value in hand. And that makes it additionally interesting. But I, I missed in general, general a bit the, 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 yeah, that kind of validation. So, uh, and therefore I asked for it. But it's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you to all jury members. Thank you again to the startups. And thank you to the Horizon Results platform. So I say it one more time. This is a platform showcasing, featuring all those high potential uh, propositions, startups, projects, which received 
uh, highly competitive EU funding. So it's my wish that all investors really keep an eye out for this platform to look for new great opportunities. And of course, Business Angels Europe very much looks forward uh, to being uh, uh, in support of this platform to make that connection between entrepreneur and investor. So thank you so much for all of your time. And my uh, last uh, thing I want to say is, please fill in the survey, which will pop up as soon as you leave the Zoom meeting. Thank you so much <laughs> and looking forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.